And in these uh, inquiries into the mystery of death, the ancient Egyptians weren't just exercising their imagination. They highly valued dream states, and it's now known that they used visionary plants like the hallucinogenic blue water lily. The ancient Egyptian tree of life has recently been identified as the Acacia nilotica, which contains high quantities of DMT, the same active ingredient that we find in ayahuasca. Now it's difficult to imagine a society more different from the society of ancient Egypt than our society today. We hate visionary states in this society. In our society, if we want to insult somebody, we call them a dreamer. In ancient societies, that was praise. In our society, if we want to insult somebody, we call them a dreamer. In our society, if we want to insult somebody, we call them a dreamer. In ancient societies, that was praise. We have erected huge apparatuses of armed bureaucracies who will invade our privacy, who will break down our doors, who will arrest us, who will send us to prison, sometimes for years, for possessing even small quantities of psilocybin or substances like DMT, whether in its notable form or in the ayahuasca brew. And yet, ironically, DMT is, we now know, a natural brain hormone. We all have it in our bodies, and it's just that its function remains unknown for lack of research. And it's not as though our society is opposed in principle to altered states of consciousness. I mean, billions are being made by the unholy alliance of psychiatrists and Big Pharma in over-prescribing drugs to control so-called syndromes like depression or attention deficit disorder in teenagers. In our society, if we want to insult somebody, we call them a dreamer. In our society, if we want to insult somebody, we call them a dreamer. In ancient societies, that was pray. We have a love affair with alcohol. We glorify this most boring of drugs, despite the terrible consequences that it often has. And of course, we love our stimulants, our tea, our coffee, our energy drinks, our sugar, and huge industries are built around these substances, which are valued because of the way they alter consciousness. But what all these approved altered states of consciousness have in common is that none of them contradict or conflict with the basic state of consciousness valued by our society, which I would call the alert, problem-solving state of consciousness. Which is good for the more mundane aspects of science, it's good for the prosecution of warfare, it's good for commerce, it's good for politics, but I think everybody realizes that the promise of a society over-monopolistically based upon this state of consciousness has proved hollow. And that this model is no longer working that it's broken in every possible sense that a model can be broken. And that urgently we need to find something to replace it. The vast problems of global pollution that have resulted from the single-minded pursuit of profit. The horrors of nuclear proliferation. The specter of hunger that millions every night go to bed starving that we can't even solve this problem despite our alert problem-solving state of consciousness. In our society, if we want to insult somebody, we call them a dreamer. In our society, if we want to insult somebody, we call them a dreamer. In ancient societies, that was praise. In our society, if we want to insult somebody, we call them a dreamer. In our society, if we want to insult somebody, we call them a dreamer. In ancient societies, that was praise.